Yo, peace is good. Um, hope all is well for everybody. It's a special video. I'm gonna call this joint hip hop albums that never saw the light of day or that never came out officially. Um, what prompted me to do this video is because uh, shout out to my dude Mike Sears. He was doing a video on um, rare and out of print albums that he wanted, but um, they're very expensive. I could relate to that. Um, but I kind of wanted. I was gonna do a video like that, but I wanted to do something different, a different approach. And I figured, why not talk about some of the albums that never saw the light of day, or if they did, they only came out um, digitally. They never came out on physicals or like where it's cassettes, CDs, or uh, you know, vinyl and stuff like that. And no, I'm not gonna be t and I'm not gonna be talking about you know, Young Z's musical meltdown because that came out already. I'm not gonna talk about Raw Breeds, uh, Killer Instinct, because that came out already. Um, you know, I was gonna talk about some albums and stuff like that. Never sort of like a day, but some of these you can find online, you know, on YouTube or like whatever um, file sharing program that you um, that you know you can find the album on. All right, so I wrote down the list. It's a pretty lengthy list. All right. Pretty long, so uh, so that's in total 44. about 44 uh, albums, stuff like that. Um, I might have to break it in parts because it's gonna be a long video. So, but I know some of you guys like it, some of you guys don't. But you know, I don't care, whatever. Um, so, without further ado, I'm um, gonna start with the first album of the video, and it is Dollar Peoples with their first album. Title Imagery, Battle Hymns, and Political Poetry. Uh, that was an album that was supposed to come out back in 1995. Um, you guys should know who Dollar Peoples are. It consists of three members DJ Babu, uh, Rock Hot, Ari Sirens, Ari Sense, I think that's how you say his name, and uh, Evidence. All right, those are the three members of the group. And, um, you know, they were, I think at the time, they were under Epic Records or Sony, the same thing. But um, the album never came out because although they recorded the album, they ad ended up leaving the group. They ended up leaving the record label. Um, I guess like political reasons. I don't know why they left the group. It was never specified why, but it was just said that they left the group and stuff like that. If somebody can inform me why they left the group, or were they kicked out or something? I don't know. Let me know. Um, and the album never came out. And but. You can hear it on YouTube or any file sharing website or blog that you ever download your um, music from. You get it from there. Um, sound wise, very different than what you would think from of um, their latest stuff. Like you know their first couple of albums, it's very different. Uh, this album tends to be a little bit more dark, more underground in a sense, which is great. I love that. Um, but. As you can see with leaked albums, you know, a lot of times those um, those albums were recorded, you know, either on that tape, on that, or, you know, uh, reel to reels, or a cassette, you know, just depending on the situation. And it was leaked, so it was, you could tell it was like cassette only. It was like, it was recorded off cassette, so um, the quality is not that good, but um, I, I kind of like that. I like the cassette vibe of the album and stuff like that, so I would love to have like a release, like a formal physical release of that album, because the album definitely needs to come out. But I highly doubt that's gonna come out because, like I said, it was supposed to come out in '95, so it's been almost 23 years since the album came out. So, fat chance of that shit coming out. But that was uh, imagery, battle hymns, and political poetry by Dallas Peoples. Supposed to come out in '95. The next album, uh, Christopher Dibs, Night of the Bloody Apes. Christopher Dibs, aka being R.A. the Rugged Man. Um, he was, at the time, he was under Jive Records. Uh, he had a couple singles out at the time. He had a single out called um, Hua Hua and Bless Your Hua Hua Hua, that shit. Um, and then he had another song called Every Label Sucks Dick that was produced by Buck Wild. Very, um, he turned out of. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, Blushay Hua Hua 
and um, it was every every label sucks dick, and uh, you know that kind of caused a lot of controversy. And at the time, um, he was known to be some some um, form of troll. You know, he's a troll that employs at Jive Records and uses a nooses. Rumor has it that he took a shit on the mixing board um, in the studio, and it was like, and then. It got to the point where like they said that like, he was harassing women, like you know, just like flirting with them and you know, just doing crazy shit. And um kicked him off the label and um the album never came out. But again, another album that got um leaked. And he did a song on that album he has a song with Biggie, the, the late great notorious B. I. G. called Cunt Renaissance. <laughs> Yo, that beat is so dope, man. That's a dope song, man. It was it's very misogynistic towards women, but it, it, it's dope. I, I like the beat and everything. It uses the same sample as um, uh, what's the sample? Uh, the Come Clean joint uh, has like that same vibe and stuff like that. But yeah, Chris Five Dev's Night of the Bloody Apes was supposed to come out that, back in 1994. Um, me and a whole bunch of other people asked Ari the Rugged Man. If that album will ever come and see the light of day, uh, he says no because he doesn't own the rights to the album. You know, Jive Records have all of that, so that's definitely not coming out. You know what I mean? Especially from a old record label, from, you know, a popular record label like that. You know what I'm saying? All right. Uh, track. Oh, wait, not track, dude. Excuse me. I'm so used to my um, album reviews. <laughs> um. Uh, album number three is Cuban Link with 24 Carat. Man, Cuban Link, man. That dude, he is so underrated, man. Cuban Link, you guys should know him. Known for his affiliation, or not affiliation, but known for being part of um, Terror Squad, being one of the members, stuff like that. Known for his affiliation with Fat Joe, Big Pun, you know, stuff like that. And uh, the thing with that album, is that it was supposed to come out back in 2000. It came out with two singles. Uh, the singles are Flowers of the Dead and um, Still Telling Lies to Me. And, you know, everybody's like, oh, yo, Cuban Lane came out with a new song. Especially that song, Flowers of the Dead, you know, being a, paying homage to um, Fat, no, um, Big Pun, because, you know, he passed that year. And like I said, that album was supposed to come out that year. I think 2000, in 2000 or 2001, I want to say 2001, because um, the version I have, I mean, I downloaded it. There's, there's no way you're gonna find the album. Um, it was a promo. It was a promo version, and, it, and like you know, they have like the automated female voice. Uh, promo copy of Trains. Da da da. Um, I forgot the date that it was said, but um, coming out da, da, 2001. I'm like, okay, so it was supposed to come out back in 2001, but man, that was a dope, dope, dope album, man. And I think at the release party is when um, he got the buck fifty uh, because there was like a there was a um, there was like a little fight going on at the release party. So I think it was at his release party something was popping off, and then that's when he got the scar, and that's how he got that. And um, and then he had a phone out with Fat Joe, so that definitely um, you know prevented the album from coming out. Which sucks, but um, it's a dope album, man. Very, very dope album. Song I would check out if I was you guys. Check out MOB, Men of Business. I think it features MOP and um, Noriega. Oh my god, that shit. The beat is dope. It's like in some movie shit, though. But it is dope. It's dope. And whew, dope, dope, dope song. Dope album, too, man. Um, would love for the album to see the light of day, but I highly doubt it. But that's Cuban Link with 24 Karat. Uh, album number four, Supernatural, Natural Disasters. Um, Supernatural being an MC who's known to do freestyles all over, you know, the states and the world. And he battled uh, Craig. Um, he, he battled Craig G back in '94. He battled uh, Mad Skills back in 1993 and stuff like that. And He's that dude, like, you know, if you give him an object, he'll rap about it. Give him another object, you know, he'll, you know, rap about that. It's pretty dope. I've seen him do that live at Rock the Bells back in 2007. It's actually pretty amazing shit, so. Um, but, yeah, Supernatural uh, with Natural Disasters. 
that was an album that was supposed to come out. Supposedly, it said it was supposed to come out back in 1993. I don't believe that. I believe that was supposed to come out maybe more like 95, just based on the production that I heard. If you listen to the beat, you can tell it was like a lot later than, um, you know, 1993. You can tell it was like made like 94, 95, that kind of thing. So, um, the, the single of the album was uh, Buddha Blessed. Uh, there is a video for that. I mean, the beats done by Gingy Brown, man, is, oh my god, those beats are fucking phenomenal, it's dark, but like, it's dark and jazzy, it's like so dope, man, I love that joint, man, but again, never came out, never came out, so, um, I don't have a copy, but I have it digitally, I have the digital version of it, because that's the only way you're gonna get it, but man, that album is phenomenal, man, it's, if you guys get a chance to hear that album, Supernatural by, um, I mean, Natural Disasters by Supernatural, I highly recommend checking that album. If you like mid-90s hip-hop, then you'll definitely enjoy that album. Uh, that's Supernatural, Natural Disasters, very dope album. Uh, album number five, uh, Lord Have Mercy, of Footmo Squad fame, uh, The Ungodly Hour, released, was supposed to come out back in 1999. Um... There was a single that Lord Have Mercy had came out off that album. I'm on YouTube, so I'm going to look it up real quick. Uh, Say What, Say What was the single of the album. Um, and there is a video for it. Um, unfortunately, the album never came out. Uh, it, it was shelved. Um, I don't know if he finished the album or it was shelved. You know what I mean? Because like I said, it was supposed to come out back in 1999. And, you know... I fuck, I love Buster Rhymes. I think he's one of the illest MCs, but he's not a good businessman. And truth be told, you know what I mean. And you know, I, with Buster Rhymes' ego, I could see that you know interfering with Lord of Mercy's album coming out because I think they had like a falling out. Because if you notice, like on the An Anarchy album, I don't remember seeing any other. Um, I guess Split Star, even Split Star, he's another dude that never came out with an album, which is just a shame. Um, it, I think with Split Star and I think Rock Marciano were the only Flipmo Squad members that appeared on Bus Rhymes' Anarchy album. Other than that, you didn't see Lord of Mercy. The last time you saw Lord of Mercy um, being on a Bus Rhymes album was actually on his third album, the Extinction Level Event album, which is a very dope album. And man, I mean, I would have loved for Lord of Mercy to come out the album. I mean, the ungodly hour, and then his voice, he has like a very deep voice, like kind of like a dark villain, kind of reminiscent of um, DV Alias Christ and Kev Rock of um, Dark Mind, Kev Rock X from um, Dark Mind, kind of like had that kind of tone, but it's very dope. Um, yeah, like I said again before, man, like... I think Buster Rhymes' ego had a lot to do with it, and they had like a falling out. So the album never came out, unfortunately. I've only heard two songs. The song Say What, Say What. And um, there's another song. It was produced by DJ Scratch. It's so fucking dope. It's called um, The Last Hour on Earth. Oh, my God. That beat is so ill. And then the, the beat and his voices go so well together with that, man. I would have loved... For that album to come out, but I highly doubt that's gonna come out. And it, it was, and plus that was under Electra Records, which was known to shelve I and I's album, um, the Life I Lead, which I'll talk about later on in this video. Um, probably um, it's not coming up yet. Um, but yeah, that was another album that was supposed to come out, but I'll talk about that another time. But yeah, um, Lord Have Mercy with the Ungodly Owl that was supposed to come out in 1999. Um, that's definitely. Like, he's definitely my favorite um, member of the group, besides Rock Marciano. Um, all right, so, then, still on the flip mode scheme of things, is uh, Rampage with his uh, supposed first album, The Red October. That album was supposed to come out back in 1994. Uh, he had a single out called Beware of the Ramp Sack. There is a video for that, um, very dope. You know, um, he did come out with an album called uh, Scout Sound of the Way of Blood, which I do have in my collection. I showed you guys that a while back. Very dope album, very underrated. Um, the production on the album was very dope. 
if you guys like uh, Buster Rhymes' um, second album, When Disaster Strikes, then you'll definitely enjoy uh, what the um, that album, Scott Sano. Although, um, Scott Sano tends to be a little bit more darker compared to the Buster Rhymes album. But yeah, man, um, Rampage of Red October, very, very dope album. Uh, love the beats, it's straight boom bap, you know, no no filler tracks, no party tracks like you did like on Scout Sauna. Um, very, very dope album, man. Um, wish it had like a physical release. It came out back in 2013 uh, digitally, but for actual like physical release, it never came out, unfortunately. And I would love to get a physical release of that album, man. And that shit is so dope. Like I said, it was supposed to come out like in 94, 95. It definitely has like a 94 sound to it. When you listen to it, very dope. Um, DJ Scratch does the production. Um, the Vibe Chemist. Um, Rashad Smith. You know, people like that. I think Vibe Chemist is Rashad Smith. They're the same person. I could be wrong about that. I know a lot of stuff, but I don't know everything. I know a lot, but you know... It's too much information to keep in my brain, but you know, I know some of you guys will, I know some of you will correct me on that. Uh, DJ Stress, even Buster Rhymes does a beat on um, beat it two on that out on that um album. Yeah, very dope. If you guys like that, boom bap '94 hip hop, straight hip hop. I guess people would call it backpacker, backpack rap, which I fucking hate. I hate that term back backpack. It's fucking stupid if you ask me. Um, but yeah. Very dope album, man. Highly recommend it. Um, you can find that on YouTube. Um, definitely check it out on your file sharing uh, site, wherever you go to, right? That is number six. Number seven, uh, we got Rod Digger with uh, her se- her supposed second album. Uh, that was supposed to be her second album. Everything is a story. That was actually supposed to come out back in 2004. Again, another album that got shelved. Um, I think it was at the time she was under J Records because that was a record label that uh, Buster Rhymes was with at the time. This is before he was with um, Aftermath Records. And um, again, I think it had a lot to do with Buster Rhymes. You know, again, like, you know, just him being an ego, egomaniac, man. Just him being a hater. You know what I'm saying? Just, I guess, you know, you know, people not kissing his ass and he's not liking that. It's like, all right, my nigga. You're not gonna kiss my ass? I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show that album and that shit never come out and will never see the light of day. And man, what I've heard from that album, oh my god. I actually like it better than Dirty Harriet, believe it or not. I mean, it's that good. It's that good. Even though Dirty Harriet was dope, it's a dope album, but just the beats, the variety on the album is just so dope. You know what I'm saying? Because I love DJ Scratch but, and Knots and stuff like that, but some of the beats. They were good, but they weren't their best beats that they've done. They made better beats and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, very, very, very dope album. Um, I've it's leaked. You can find it if you type it in. Rod Digger, everything is a story. Um, it'll pop up. Um, I've heard it on. I forgot what website I heard it on. I think it was Hip Hop Site. And that Hip Hop. I think it's um Hip Hop Site dot com. Um, I believe it's on Bandcamp too. You can find it on our Bandcamp. It's on that too. So definitely check that out. So, but yeah, very very dope album, man. I highly recommend. It. You can find it um, digitally because it never came out with a physical. Another album never came with a physical, unfortunately. You know what I mean? It's sad, but you know it is what it is, man. But yeah, very dope album, man. If you could give it a listen, highly recommend it. All right. That's uh, Rod Digger where everything is a story. The supposed date was supposed to come out in 2004. Next album is uh, Trigger the Gambler with Lights of 50 for the Gamble. Uh, that was an album that was supposed to come out back in 97, 98. Uh, at the time, Trigger the Gambler was under Def Jam. Um, he had a single out called Bus, which uses the same sample of the average white sample, the average. Uh, the average white band uh, sample, I forgot the name of it, but it's the same sample. Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, it's the same sample used by uh, Big Daddy Kane, another victory off his second album. Uh, it's a Big Daddy thing. One of my favorite, if not my favorite, Big Daddy Kane song of all time. I love that song. 
You know what I'm saying? Nothing to take away from the Ain't No Half Stepping. That's a dope song, but another victory? Oh my god. One of Easy One Beats, Illus Beats. Definitely check that song out when you guys get a chance. But, anyways, getting back to Trick of the Gambler. That's the 50 50 Gamble. You guys know him as um, the brother of Smooth the Hustler. You know, Smooth the Hustler came out with that classic album, uh, Once Upon a Time in America. Um, dope album. Still trying to get my hands on that album, but, you know, um, kind of hard to find. But it goes for a little bit of money. I remember it was very expensive at one point, but then I heard, I've seen the price fluctuate for that album. But now with Trigger the Gambler, the album never came out. It was supposed to come out, but it never did. Uh, of course, the album leaked. You know, it's like one of the most famous leaked albums in the hip hop world. And man, that album is fucking tough, man. The beats on that album is dope. I mean, DR period. You can't go wrong with DR period. Um, yeah, man. Very, very, very dope, man. Um, I, I kind of like that on a little bit better than um, Once Upon a Time in America, believe it or not, man. I mean, that's how dope that album is, you know? Even though Once Upon a Time in America had got some dope joints like Murder Fest and um, Broken Language and you know, Hustling and Only Human, you know, songs like that. But yeah, but man, that Trigger the Gambler album, that needs to come out pronto. And it's crazy because I hit up um, Smooth the Hustle on Facebook years ago before he deleted me. And I asked him, like, yo, what's good with Trigger the Gambler's album? Is he coming out with the album? The album, of, the, the album came out already. I'm like, no. Like, I, you know, I didn't want to argue with him. But I'm like, no. I didn't want to be arguing with him. I'm like, okay, I'll look it up. But the album never came out. You know, the, the album never came out. Well, I think that's what I said. I don't remember. But, uh, but I think he says, like, something about the album came out. But I'm like... Nah, it didn't come out, so, um, I could be wrong about that, but, you know, it was so long ago, but needless to say, the ne that album never came out, but it's definitely a dope album, so I highly recommend checking that album out, um, it's on YouTube, you can find it in your file sharing website you go to, um, it's called, uh, Life's a 50 50 Gamble by Trigger the Gambler, that was supposed to come out back in 1998, I believe, in 97. <laughs> Next album is uh, Flipmo Squad with the Rulership Movement. Uh, I believe that album was supposed to come out back in the early 2000s, uh, particularly in uh, 2002, 2003, or 2001. Man, the two tracks that I heard from it, fucking bananas. I'm trying to find the rest of the album, but I can't find it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to my dude Vegas of uh, Hip Hop Now Podcast. He's mentioned this, um, he mentioned that album before, um, he, um, did a, he did a segment like this, where he talks about, uh, unreleased albums that, that leaked or that never came out, that never saw the light of day, uh, so I figured, like, you know, let me, let me kind of piggyback, make my own version of that album, of a video like that, so, but yeah, um, very, very dope, man, a lot, based on what I heard, it's a lot better than um, the first album because the first album was kind of eh, it's kind of iffy it was like you know it was, it, it was trying to go for the more commercial route it had some feel it had a lot of filler tracks I mean, you know those, the, the cha 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 song that corny ass song like I wasn't really feeling that shit but um got a couple of decent songs on that album but I feel like that album could have been a little bit better the Imperial album um could have been a little bit better but that's just my opinion but those two tracks that I heard from the Flipmo Squad album, um, the ruler, um, the rulership movement, pff, fucking stupid, man, stupid, stupid. But yeah, that's the rulership movement by Flipmo Squad. Uh, supposed to release in that 2002, 2003. All right. Uh, number ten. Um, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna keep this as the last um, album. Uh, the OG version of I Am. <laughs> Oh my god. If that album would have come out in its original form, I think that would have been definitely one of Nas's best albums, in my opinion. Um, the story with that album is that uh, it originally was supposed to be a double disc album. And the whole synopsis of the album was it was supposed to be a mixture of Illmatic and it was written. Hence why you have you know, New York State of Mind, and New York, um, 
part two and songs like Nas is like with Primo and stuff like that. Um, you know, songs like um, uh, can't think of the top of my head. But anyways, um, Hate Me Now, you know, songs like that. What you would hear something like that on it was written like that type of style. But like I said, it was supposed to be a double disc album, but that album got heavily bootlegged. It got leaked. Um, so a lot of those songs you can hear it on mixtapes. Um, some of the songs you're hearing on on um, uh, the lost tapes, you know, and stuff like that. Um, you can find it online and things like that, but. Yeah, man, if it would have come out back in, like, 98, when it was supposed to come out in 98, 99, man, that album would have been fucking bananas. It would have been one of his best albums, bar none. And, um, so he had to renew, he had to do, redo some of the songs and, um, make whole new songs, like, remix some of them, things like that, and, you know, what you see from I Am is what you got now. Um, yeah, very, 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 very dope, man. I even like the retail version of I Am, which I feel like is underrated. But a lot of people don't like that album, you know, but I thought it was a dope album. And then, you know, then he ended up coming out with Nostradamus back in um, the same year, 1999, because a lot of those songs were from the original version um, of I Am. Some were new songs that never came out that he had to redo. Some were like remixed a little bit, you know, things like that. Like songs like uh, Project Window with Ron Ozzy. That was supposed to be on the I Am album. But again, because it leaked, you know, that's why, you know, it never came about and stuff like that. But yeah, man, um, I would love for Nas to put out the original version of the album, man. Because that definitely deserves to be put out. But that, that would never happen because Nas, he's a billionaire now. So he's never going to think about the past now. Nah, I mean, he, he lives off of Illmatic and stuff like that. And I know he recently just did the, um, I know, cause I know some of you guys gonna, someone's gonna ask me about it. If I seen the, um, the orchestra version, um, performance of Illmatic. I didn't see, I see the pieces of it. I'm gonna check it out because that shit look enticing. I seen a little bit about, uh, I seen the performance he did for The World Is Yours. I was like, oh, okay, I, I like where he's going with that. And yeah, so that's Nas I Am, the original version, the double disc version that was supposed to come out back in 98, 99, but never came out because it got leaked. So some of those songs you get here on YouTube, uh, some of them are on the Lost Tapes that came out back in 2002, some of them are on Nostradamus. That's it, folks. Um, I'm going to keep it short. That's 10 albums. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. Definitely stay tuned, all right, for more. I might record another video today or tomorrow. depends because the lighting for this camera sucks. So, the only way I could record the video is during the day. So, but that's it, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, definitely stay tuned for more. This is going to be part one. So, it's going to be in a couple parts. Uh, so, I might just do 10 albums per video just to make it a lot better. A lot more clean. A lot more um, organized. So, that's pretty much it. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace.